Hi everybody, and welcome to episode 3 of my Minecraft series from the Project Hydra server. I've been very busy off camera. I've made a guardian farm. I've opened up a shop. I've explored the end a lot more. Found myself a pair of elytra and I'm very excited about that. But I thought first and foremost for today's episode, let's get some building done. For far too long, I've been living in this tiny little cave with almost nothing to show for it. Just a couple villagers, tiny bed, very cold, very dark, damp, dreary, and very unorganized storage. So that today that changes. We're going to be building our very first starter base structure. And it's going to go right there in the middle of the lake. So without uh, further ado, I'm going to measure this out. And then we can start building. Alright, so I've marked out a spot that I'm going to build my base. It's going to be right there on top of that sand. I've gathered plenty of andesite to create it out of. Just a couple shulkers of andesite to build that with. And uh, I think it's time that I enter my very first first person time lapse. Right, there you have it, the andesite bowl. 
Let's uh, put our wings on and take a look at this thing. So I got it all lit up on the inside. It's a nice bowl. Very, uh, very bowl-like. And I'm gonna fill it with things. Things that go in a bowl. How much do I need to describe? I, I'm, I'm gonna live in a bowl. A bowl of what, you might ask? Well, only time will tell. But, there we have it. It's a very interesting looking build. Uh, definitely took a lot of circles to make it. But we got ourselves a bowl. Ow. I'm alive. Uh, putting down some sand as the base layer. Uh, I live in an island chain of about, I'd say, three, maybe four islands. And one day I'm going to connect them all. But that's a lot of water to fill in. And I'm just planning for the future. So you might be wondering why I decided to make my base a bowl. And the answer is quite simple. I am very serial about my builds. And this bowl is no exception. I'm super serial. Anyway, let's move on. Now obviously there's one major thing missing with this uh, cereal bowl. And that of course is the cereal. So in order to get cereal in our little cereal bowl here, we're going to have to first fill it with milk. Now I know you're supposed to put the cereal in first, but this is Minecraft. You gotta put the milk in first if you're going to do it right in Minecraft. That's just the way things are. So let's, let's get some milk. There we go. We got our milk. We're gonna run it on over to the bowl. And we're gonna toss it in there. And we're gonna have ourselves some nice cereal. Alright, so we pillared up. Got our milk bucket. Got our bowl. Whatcha! Huh. That's interesting. Couldn't have worked better if I do say so myself. Now, of course, it's time to get the cereal in the bowl. So anyone who's ever had kids cereal knows it comes in all sorts of colors. So for that, we're gonna need our pinks, we're gonna need our reds, we're gonna need our yellows. I think this is gonna work out perfectly. Speaking of perfect, let's have a word from one of our sponsors. Today's episode is brought to you by Barrels! They're barrels of fun! Get it? Anyone? Do you have too many items just lying around? Do you need a storage system that can contain all of these items? Well, I have good news for you, my friend, because a new storage system has just arrived, and it's called the crate, I mean the barrel. Crate, I mean barrels, come in one shape and size. It's square, just like a crate, I mean barrel. Use the barrel to store all your favorite items. Some of you may be thinking to yourselves, Maybe I could just use crates or soccer boxes or something. I mean, won't any storage system work? No. No, it cannot. Shulker boxes are expensive, and chests just don't have that sleek, rounded square look that the barrel has. In order to prove the power of barrels, we've set up the Awesome Detector 1000. Let's test the chest first. Look at that. The light doesn't even turn on. Let's try the shulker box next. Ah, huh, look at that. It also doesn't turn on. Now let's try the barrel. Look at that, the light turns on. Whoops, clean up aisle one. Chests don't function as a normal block, so you can't even run rails over them. But with barrels, you can do just that. Just look at it go. Want to know the best part about barrels? They stimulate the economy. Don't believe me? Just ask Ted over here. Ted is an unemployed villager with no job. Look at that. He's got nothing to sell. But give him a barrel. Look at that. He instantly becomes a fisherman. 
Hmm. Bucket of Cud, my favorite. Got some spare planks and slabs lying around? Why not make a barrel? Simply go to your favorite crafting bench, planks on each side, slabs on top, instant barrel. So whether you're looking to create sleek, affordable storage for yourself or employment for your entire village, barrels have you covered. And remember, they're not just crates, they're barrels. Going to a desert, looking for green dye, can't mix yellow and blue. Seriously, mixing yellow and blue dye does not make green, and this is very annoying. Dear Moyang, please add the ability to mix yellow and blue dye into green dye, so I do not have to sail across an entire ocean and pick cactuses or cacti in order to get the color green. Here we are. Replant. Here we are. Replant. Here we are. Replant. Replant, replant, replant. Replant, replant, replant. Replant, replant, replant. Replant, replant, replant. All right, here we go. And we'll have enough green dye to last us an episode. All right, got the green dye, now let's make some cereal. Hello, Mr. Zombie Piglin. Got the cereal in the bowl. Um, let's go grab our elytra and get an aerial shot of this and see how it looks. Oh, look at that. A cereal bowl with plenty of cereal in it. Beautiful, I love it. Now that we're done with our cereal business, we can now move on to other kinds of business. Well, that time is finally upon us. It's the holiday season and it's time to spread some Christmas cheer. That's why on today's Handicraft Corner, we're gonna be doing just that. So I'm heading on over into a frozen biome to get me some snow. I suppose a little bit of ice wouldn't hurt either. Now we gotta get ourselves some snow. be enough snow. All right, let's head on over to the shopping district and let's build Christmas. All right, so we made it to the shopping district. We're gonna pay for our plot. Vandal Claus's Christmas plot. All right, I think I found a good plot for this. Let's clear out some of these mushrooms. All right, time to measure this little plot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, got this plot all measured out. Now we're going to set up the most important part about this Christmas plot, the Christmas tree. So I found the exact center of the plot. We're going to put in our four spruce saplings. Just going to help these saplings along a little bit. Now that's a little too tall for a Christmas tree. We're gonna want those leaves to start around right here. High enough that we can put presents under it, but low enough that it's a Christmas tree and not a really tall spruce tree. All right, take two. And we're out of bone meal.
All right, we're back with more bone meal. It's way too tall. All right, third time's the charm. Nope. Okay, take number four. Nope. Take number five. Nope. Take six. Nope. Take number seven. Yay! We got our tree. Now it's time to decorate it. up the edges of this a bit. Get it? Spruce? Because spruce logs? I slay me. Of course, one thing we're missing. What Christmas tree wouldn't be complete without cake? Another one here, one there, and one right there. Alright, next up we're gonna put down some presents. That worked out perfectly. Put some friends around here. One, two, three, four. One, two. Get ourselves a snow golem. There we go. Oh, he wandered off into the water. We're gonna have to figure out a way to keep him on the Christmas barge. I have an idea. a bridge. Yeah. Not so snow golems. Snow people. Look how happy he is. Now just some signs to explain what we're doing in here and we're done. Welcome to Fando Claus's Christmas Plot. Feel free to use this space for gift exchanges and to spread holiday cheer. Everyone is also encouraged to add decorations. And there you have it. A nice festive Christmas tree, some snowmen, and free cookies for anyone who wants to get into the holiday spirit. So if your friends don't find you festive, they should at least find you crafty. Now if you'd excuse me, I got some more building to do. Another thing I wanted to show everyone today was the guardian farm I built off camera. Right here, it's, I call it Fando's Fishbowl. Surrounded completely on all sides by glass. It takes uh, guardians, throws them up a tube, and puts them on top of those magma blocks down here for easy collection. This design was actually uh, taken from a player known as Impulse SV and he used a design that uses the pathfinding abilities of the guardians to swim towards those edges down there by the fence gates and then they'll be picked up run along a conveyor of water all the way to this tube here which will send them up a bubble column and onto another conveyor of water down into the kill tube where they'll meet their demise on some magma blocks and then get picked up by this hopper and thrown into my little collection system here. Got our prismarine shards, our prismarine crystals, some raw cod, and even some ink sacks. Export them to the shopping district where I can sell them all. Tasty cooked cod. Now that we've checked out our guardian farm, let's head on over to the shopping district where I'll show you the shop I made. Oh, that's a beautiful bowl of cereal. I wonder who made that. The shopping district this season is on a mushroom island, which is great because no hostile mobs spawn on the mushroom island. Which means we can all build and trade in safety, knowing we won't be blown up by creepers or attacked. And early on, let's just take a look at uh, what shops we got right here. So right here we got Chairman Mao's Anvil Shop. 
He sells all sorts of cool uh, diamond tools, and diamond armor. I've actually uh, bought in several things from his shop already. And right now we have Bonded Salt's The Boom Box. I love it. It's, it's a hot air balloon. He sells uh, TNT. Let's see here. Boom Blocks. Three diamonds for a half stack. Sells TNT. Bang Sticks. One diamond for three stacks. It was sold out already. I don't even know what a bang stick is. Bonded Salt, if you're watching this video, what is a bang stick? Please tell me. I need to know. Next up we have here... Day passes for an XP farm in the end. I think that's uh, Chairman Meows, because he built the shop next to it, and it's on the same plot. Uh, Mindless Panda's Mineshaft Shop. <laughs> Somebody paid with Diamond Ore. <laughs> Request Chest. One stack, one diamond. For Iron Ingots? That's not bad. Five diamonds for a stack of the blocks. Oh, that's a better deal than the over there. Might take them up on that someday. So, what we got here is our system of buying land in the shopping district. So it says, want to open a shop? Buy a plot of land in the shopping district. One diamond block gets you a 10 by 10 area. So we have Chairman Meow with his anvil shop, a Mindless Panda's mineshaft shop, and then one, two, three, four. I've purchased four uh, 10 by 10 areas for a total of 20 by 20. And I made this little emporium over here. Very nice accent. I'm gonna put some banners up that say Fandos on it. Um, but let's take a look inside. Nice checkered floor, and I got some barrels. Or I sell all sorts of goodies from my guardian shop. So I got Prismarine for two diamonds per stack. No sales yet. Prismarine bricks, four diamonds a stack. No sales yet. Dark Prismarine, eight diamonds per stack. I know it's early game, but that takes a lot of resources to make. Same with the Sea Lanterns, eight diamonds per stack. And if anyone needs black dye or book and quills, they can buy their ink sacks here. I'll definitely be implementing a system later to help people uh, save money while shopping at this Emporium. Because eventually, I'm going to expand it even more upwards to include a lot more goods than just uh, stuff from the Guardian Farm. I'll probably do uh, general mob drops, I'll do other automated farms. Um, as I expand my base, I'll keep adding to the shop and keep expanding it upwards. What do we have here? Or for Fendo from the Spookster. That's a um, scary skeleton. Wither Roses. Oh, he gave me almost three stacks of Wither Roses. That was nice of him. I actually helped uh, s Scary on uh, a item sorter he was working on for his Wither Rose farm. He actually sent me a message the other day asking if I wanted to collaborate on another farm with him. And uh, of course I said yes, because who, who doesn't want to help another agent out? Now it's time to fly home. Well guys, that's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The lights are broke. It's okay. I have a boat. I'm not dead. Wait a minute.